I sure will. Uh, good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. <laughs> one and only, Steve Harvey. <laughs> Got a radio show. Yeah, man. Got one. Hey, you know, um, I, I thought I think of my life in terms of blessings, you know. I, I take mostly a positive approach and a positive spin to my life. I hardly ever dwell on, uh, you know, the What's well, I can't say that I don't think about the what's wrong in it because I have to, because I have to address problems as they arise. But I try not to let them consume me. I let the consumption part be about the blessings, the positive things that uh has occurred in my life, the good things that God has done for me, the the power that He's uh displayed in my life, the protection He's given me over the years, the being tucked under His wings. I focus on the things that he promises me. I think of uh, all the goodness that I perceive to come my way. I, I think that has a lot to do with me learning more and more about the law of attraction in terms of, you know, what you think and what you put out in the space and what you pray about is what you receive, you know. And so I've become better and better at that. It's not to say that I'm I'm not human and I don't have moments where I think I think a little bit too long about what's going wrong and what enemy is, is about to attack and what they're going to do and say and, and all of this here. So that's not to say that I'm not concerned about it, but I try to dwell mostly on the positive. And um, one of the things that I learned, you can have an incredible life, all of you, all of us. We can have incredible lives if we just let God drive. See, the, the problem that I had years ago was I was the driver of my life and I was taking myself in the directions that I thought would be best for me. And I aimed at things that I thought I could accomplish. And I set goals that I saw myself being able to attain. I was driving when I gave up and I let God drive. I then opened up my mind and my spirit to what God had for me, for what God could see for me, for what God could do in my life, for for what God wanted for me. Now, he wanted for me and he wanted of me. See, that's the connection that you got to try to make. Well, not try. That's the connection that you got to make to really get it. Now, listen to me. What I don't want you to do is do like me. Don't be afraid of the what for of the what he wants you to do part. 
See, because that ain't going to be nearly as demanding and, and as offsetting as you think it's going to be. See, I thought that if I did God's will, that if I let God tell me what to do, that it would cause me to not to be able to do a certain some things I wanted to do. Well, which is true. But the stuff I wanted to do was all detrimental to my well-being and my future and my and my growth and development as a man. I was stopping my own growth as a man because, see, I was doing what I thought I should do as a man. But when you give it over to God, see, God has a much better plan for you than you can ever have for yourself. And God knows a better way, far better than the one you know. I, I want you to believe that, man. You got to understand that part of it. And, and that's the part that I finally got through my head to let God do it his way and to show me a better way. And to teach me a better way and expose to me a better way. And when I opened up my mind to what God was talking about, I began to see things totally differently. And things started coming to me totally differently. If you've been a friend of mine or a fan of mine over the years, I mean, you've had to see it, the change. You've had to see the difference. I mean, and I and I acknowledge that every chance I get because I promised God I would, and I hope that I'm not falling short in that category. But then again, if I told it all day long what he done for me, I still wouldn't have enough time to really explain thoroughly what he's done for me because it's such a continuous growth in me. But now, that's not to say that I'm finished or I'm done or I'm complete because I'm still short. <laughs> And that's the cold thing about it, man. See, no matter how good you get at it, you ain't going to ever be the best you can be. You're just not because you're going to fall short. You can't be him. You can strive for perfection. I hear people saying it all the time. I applaud you for saying you want to be perfect, but you ain't. And you can't. And you're not. And you aren't. And you won't. And you will not. And so you quit saying it. You quit saying it to me. Quit saying it to other people. I'm seeking a life of perfection, but it's something that you cannot have because he said you can't do it. But that's what he there for. He there for the moments when you stumble and you fall and you gonna stumble and fall. So you got to get that part right, man. The stumbling, falling part is coming. But see, you get God in your life and it helps you so that you don't stumble, fall, wallow, roll over, lay there, languish. That's what God is for. So when you stumble and fall, you get back up because you're going to make mistakes. You're going to get it wrong. You're going to come under attack. You're going to be lied about. You are going to be falsely accused. That's going to happen to you the moment you make a decision to do better. The moment you try to be more. The moment you try to get it right. The devil got to send his attackers, man. And he controls certain people. He just got people that's on his side 24-7. You know them, too. You, you've all met one or two of them in your life. They just busy with the business of nothingness. They just busy about the, about the destruction of others. You said, I know them. You know them. They coming. But here's what you got to hold fast to. They can't take away nothing from you that God gave you. They didn't make you. See, people who claim to have made you, if they so in the make you business, why don't they make they self? Or if they ain't with you no more and they so busy in them, I made you business, why don't they make somebody else? Since, since, since you want to get credit for making somebody, make yourself. If you're responsible for someone else's success, then you should easily be able to take claim and be responsible for your own success. See, be careful of that. And don't, and, and don't, don't change your course because somebody is attacking you with that. You keep doing what you're doing. I just hope, man, that I'm giving it to God the way I said I would give it to him. That I would unload every chance I got that I was supposed to. Without being, you know, oh, here he come again. You know, I try not to be that. But, man, I don't know what else to be for the first 12 minutes of my show. What else you want me to say? I got four hours. I can't give God 12, 12 minutes, man. I mean, for real, Steve? Come on, man. I mean, let's look at this right here. It's like, uh, for example, it's like detoxing your body, which is one of the most healthy things you can do for your body is to detox your system and clean out the pipes and the liver and the blood and get it all together, give your kidneys a break and all like this. Okay, right. Okay. 
But to detox it properly, it takes 21 days, right? And I hear a lot of people talking about, ah, 21 days, I ain't got, but see, hold up, man. If the 21 days out of 360 days a year, you ain't got 21 to straighten yourself out. You ain't got 21 days to give yourself a better shot at health. I mean, that that's crazy to me once you wrap your mind around it. See, and so, like, if you give an honor to God just 12 minutes out the day, dog, he gave you 24 hours of luxury and life and breath and hope and promise. You ain't got 12 minutes to give him out the day? That don't make no sense. What an exchange. What a wonderful life God has given me in exchange for so small of effort that I put forth. Don't let the effort you got to put forth to God seem so daunting that you don't attempt to do it because, man, it seems like a lot. It ain't nothing compared to what he be giving us for real. So if you want a real life, you want a real shot at what you can be, what you can have, what you can own, what you can become, who you really are, go to God. Let him fix you, man. That's all. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Steve Harvey Morning Show is now underway. Full complement of players today. Shirley Strawberry. Hey, good morning, Steve. Carla Pharrell. What's up, Steve Harvest? Junior. Morning, Unc. J. Anthony. Watch out there now, Steve Harvey. The fool, nephew Tommy. (laughs) Yes, sir. We in the building, baby. What it do? We here, man. What's up, Unc? Hey, man, I'm good, man. Live and well. Want to thank everybody, all my supporters and fans out there, the people that love me. We got you. Hold me. appreciate all y'all. What? We got Every you. last one of y'all. We got you. We got you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, and I will. What? Is... <laughs> yeah. I got hey, you. man, and a special <laughs> shout out to this church group of women <laughs> who came to Family Feud on Saturday. Uh-huh. And I met outside and took pictures with them. Shout out to y'all. Of course, you know I can't remember the church. It's new something, Pastor. They told me they, I don't, you don't remember none of that. New something. Yeah. New something. You know how many new somethings it yeah. is? Yeah. Right. We are, we are uh, yeah. from well, New they Israel. They know who they is. New Israel. New Bethel. New well, Bethel. Was, it wasn't but one new at Family Feud. <laughs> and, and I got news for you. It probably wasn't even new. Uh-huh. It's probably something else. But shout out to that, man. I'm in a good mood today, man. I'm ready. You sound excited. good, Steve. You do. You sound really yeah, good. Yeah, I saw. I watched All Star Game. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Okay. They no got defense. some clips on them. Yeah, they never do play defense. <laughs> no. Ain't but no defense. The, the play that uh-huh. I saw, the play of plays, uh-huh. was uh-huh. Steph Curry going down the left wing and bouncing that damn ball over Durant's head, yep. and uh, the big Greek boy the, slammed the it. Greek freak. Ooh. Tommy, have you seen that? I saw it. Oh, it's greatness. It. That was yeah. greatness. That was then nice. The D-Wade uh, lob to uh, LeBron, LeBron off the backboard. I saw that one. The Greek is old, dog. Oh, the man. Greek he's, he's, man, he's nasty, man. He's, he's a bad boy. He's a bad boy. Golly. The slam dunk contest told me. I hated you know, it. Hey, bro, look, if you miss, <laughs> you know, don't win. Yeah, well, I got you got it right on the fifth try. Yeah, yeah. You get two more yeah. minutes? Yeah. <laughs> but if you miss the first one, you should be ineligible of getting a 50. Yeah. Right. Every yeah. time you miss, you lose a point. Yeah. So if you was going to get a 10, you get an 8. You know, if you you know, something, man, you lose huh. a half a point. I, I just, I don't like all the attempts. Was, you remember when Nate Robinson won it? He had so many attempts. He missed it five times. Man. I just was... don't like that. But the boy that jumped over Shaq was cold, though. Yes. He jumped How about that guy from Philly? Yeah. How about that guy from Philly, Yeah. Well, that yeah. boy jumped over Philly. Shaq. He jumped yeah. over Shaq. I just Wait a minute. to get in the conversation. He no. defied gravity. No, no he Shaq. jumped over Shaq. No, he didn't he, defy gravity. He jumped completely he jumped over, Shaq. over Shaq, spread <laughs> his jumped. legs, he could jump. and dunked, and left his elbow in the rim. What? Yeah. I, and then wow. had the Superman, respond. Superman under, wow. under his jersey. Yeah. yeah, I'm impressed. My okay. husband was watching it. He was like, <laughs> sure, "Don't tell nobody else." That. I'm sorry. <laughs> do y'all, do y'all sorry. think the three point contest should headline the Saturday night instead of the dunk contest? No. No. Can we keep getting why, this? Why don't you bring it up? Well, we'll talk about. It. We'll talk some more about it. Uh, uh, and we got to talk about Anthony Hamilton. And his, oh, nice. And, yeah, we got to talk about oh, yeah, that, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we'll be back at 32 after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
All right, uh, we were talking about the All-Star Game, which amazingly happened over the weekend, I, I understand. And uh, <laughs> You understand. You ain't seen it. I didn't realize Stop. it was on. Do you have cable? What you be Do doing? You have a sure. <laughs> I just didn't watch it. I was watching cable or something. Yeah. I it, was on on cable. Cable. it was on cable. It was on cable. It was on TNT. TNT. Yeah. Oh no, uh-uh. Yeah. Junior, I, stop yelling. It's okay. No, no she's she not making You know how he is about, smart, about sports. Sorry. Hey, Junior. <laughs> junior, I'm, I didn't watch the whole game. Yeah, see. Well, I got that up, but you knew it was on well, TNT. Well, I was at work though, because we had to work <laughs> Sunday night. Oh too. yeah, you. St- but it was Saturday and Sunday of day. I watched. Oh, I, I worked sure. all day. I did family, celebrity family feud Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh, you bet. Making that money. Well, okay, but wait. Before we left, Junior, you asked, do you no, think? because the slam dunk contest was so disappointing. Uh-huh. I said, should we just let the, we should even have it, just let the, the three-point three point, contest uh-huh. just go ahead and close our Saturday. And so you said, no, huh? absolutely not. And so, no, because the dunk contest is supposed to be the thing. You know, it's supposed until to be Until it's not. Thing. Uh, yeah, you know, until we like need dunkers. Yeah. We need some dunkers. <laughs> yeah, until that's the problem. <laughs> we ain't got no dunkers. It just, you know, look, Jordan against Dominique that was, was the yes. precedence for dunk contests. And, you know, man, you got to have it. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, it, it wasn't there this past. Now, the year before, that boy Levine. Yeah. Huh, mm-hmm. That jumped over the mascot mm-hmm. in the sitting position the sitting and position. dunked. Yeah, wow. Yo, you know how high that is. Yeah, wow. But they was dunking. What we had this year? <laughs> what? We had a he bunch of maybe. just wide open misses. <laughs> maybe we need a maybe we need a layup competition. You know what I'm saying? Like, the skills competition was more entertaining. <laughs> maybe we need a stealing the ball competition. Yeah. Because the three Throw point uh, that was better. Oh, it was three good. Point. Oh, okay. oh, it was three point shoot. That was good. good. I saw that too. Sure. Oh, that was good. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was Saturday night. I was with my man posted. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the grandkids was over all weekend, so, you know. Uh-huh. I stayed at work long as I could so they could be asleep when I got home. <laughs> so what you been, your strategic I've been working planning. all day. I can't. So, I can't come can't in. You can't, Grandpa, when you get off, man. Nah, hell no. Nah. <laughs> man, I be tired. They man. love you, Steve, so much. I mean, man, they come Kids running. Yeah. Steve, and, you know, you I got to really give it to them. Uh-huh. Well, they like learning the cuss words that you show them. You no, they're it. not. T- I'm not teaching them. They're picking it up. Oh, because you're just not changing anything about yourself. Well, that means no, you're laying it house. down. <laughs> yeah. This is my house. Yeah, but you, sometimes when kids are around, Steve, you make the necessary adjustments so they yeah, won't pick should, up huh? things like that. Hey, put that yeah. down off Pawpaw's desk. <laughs> hey, put that down off. Get your ass away from the desk. <laughs> <laughs> Now, so you, you know, don't get two times? <laughs> yeah. That's that's on that third one. On that yeah. third one. You know, I'm going to give you two times, then. After that, we finna change the way. Obviously, yeah. this ain't getting through. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. And they remember, put that ass, put your ass down. So yeah, they do. They that's do. the one thing. They they and then they go tell, <laughs> they they go go tell, tell it, Nana. Yeah, they go <laughs> and mom and daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Anthony Hamilton, though. I mean. Come on. His rendition, yeah, oh, it was yeah. great. Yeah, His rendition real. of the Star Spangled Banner was real. really, that really good. Yeah. Anthony Hamilton got at it. Yeah, they they had him on several sports shows. Yeah, they were yeah. talking about the bad versions that's went out, uh-huh. and then because they was mad at Fergie Fergie. last year. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, well, let's take a let's listen to a little bit of it. Here we go. So proudly we hear at the twilight last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight and the ramparts we watch was so gallant. That 
From Charlotte, right? Yeah, yeah. So they yeah. gave him love. I'm gonna have yeah. to put that one right next yeah. to uh, now, now, now. Yeah, Marvin's Marvin. at the All Star yeah. Game. Yeah, hands uh, down my favorite. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. and then right, right up there with Whitney though. At this yeah, you gotta put Whitney up. No wait, there, right? now Whitney's was the Whitney's, Whitney's was top Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah Super I mean, Bowl. Whitney's yeah. was like you know that that voice. But oh, the version God. that Marvin Gaye did uh, yeah. and the version Anthony Hamilton just Woo! did. Now, let me did. text Anthony Hamilton. But you know what, we Anthony said. We need to play Marvin, no? Uh, yeah, yeah. But not <laughs> Carl Lewis, though, right? Hell no. no. Hell Ooh, yeah. I didn't know. Oh, Roseanne. <laughs> Yeah, why would you not? Anthony said Fergie texted him and said, great job. I bet she, she did. did. Yeah. Coming, bet. Up, <laughs> coming up next, the nephew and run that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, guys, in entertainment news, more questions uh, coming out about Jesse Smollett's attack. And uh, oh, Miss Ann, yeah, Miss Ann <gasps> is going to be here uh, with national news. Right now, the nephew's in the building with Run That Prank Back. What you got for us, Neff, today? I've got the sleeping security guard. Oh. Okay. Sleeping mm-hmm. security guard. Run it. Security booth, may I help you? Hey, uh, uh, this. Sir, can this, you speak up? I can barely hear you. Is this a, is this a security booth down by the uh by the gate? Yes, sir. This is security booth. Yeah, listen, man. It's some people uh next door to me. They they keep. I'm hearing a bunch of scuffling and stuff going on, but I ain't. I, you know, I ain't really sure what's happening. I know, I know. I'm, oh, I heard okay. this lady scream or something, man. But I, I just. <sighs> okay, sir. If you could give us the unit number that. Uh, you're in. We could have somebody come right over there and check that out. Hello, sir. Sir. Um. Hello. <coughs> yeah. Sir, are hello? you okay? Yeah, I, 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 uh, I got a, I got a sleeping disorder, man. So I, I be, oh, okay. Oh, sleep. I, but I, 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 I understand. The, the people ne- next door to me, man. They was, I mean, they was sitting there. I, I heard this lady scream, and I just didn't. I ain't want nobody to, you know, start shooting or nothing because I know they was arguing pretty, pretty heavily. And then I heard it. I know they must have been fighting because I heard some. I, 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 some I understand, scuffle. sir. Sir, what what unit are you in? <sighs> Hello, sir. Are you there? Hello. Hello. <coughs> uh, hello. Yes, I'm here. Are you okay? Is this you? The, you the security guy, right? Yes, sir. You called us about ten minutes ago, and we've been trying to find out what unit you're in. Well, yeah, man. These people up here, man. They they arguing, and I I be I'm hearing more people over there now, and they they fighting, man. I know I hear two two. It's got to be two men in there fighting. This lady over there, sir, sir, sir. I, I hate I to interrupt I, you, but I hear some if you could kids. just tell me the unit, the unit, sir. The I unit. hear some kids over there too. Sir. We need to know the unit so that we can come out and investigate. Hello? Hello? Sir? Hello? 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 Sir? Hey, hey, look. I cannot do this all day. I am trying to work. I cannot be around with you on the phone. 
Could you please give me your unit number? Sir, the, the, the people over there, they are arguing, man. I know you. Yes, you have said that they are arguing. I heard you when you said that they were arguing. Sir, if you just give me that unit number that either you're in or the unit number you hear the uh, noise coming from, we could have somebody come over there and check that out immediately. So what unit number are you in again, sir? Do you do you do you do you hear him arguing? See, uh, let me put. No, I to... only hear your snoring. I need the unit number. Let me see, listen. I'm gonna put the phone up. You, do you hear him? You hear him? Yes, sir. But I don't hear the unit number. I need the unit number. Without the unit number, we're just having a conversation. Hello. Hello. Hello? Hello? Sir, are you there? Yo, yo. Oh, hey, man, you checked on them people? No, sir, we have not checked on the people because we have not been able to get the unit number from you. <sighs> sir? Dude, this is <laughs> falling Every time he gets ready to tell me something, he falls to sleep. Come here, come here, You got to hit it. He falling to sleep. Hey, man, come here. Dude, this guy is falling to sleep on the phone. I can't get the unit out of him because he's falling asleep. Hello, sir? Hello, sir? Sir? Hey, man, I don't know what unit he's in. The he's falling asleep. Every time I ask him something, he falls asleep. He keeps telling me they're over there fighting, but I don't hear him. I, he won't tell me the f***ing you. I don't, I'm sorry. I don't know the you. What the f***? Would you wake your f*** up, please? Hey, I got a guy on the phone that he says that they keep hearing some screaming over his by his unit, but he's falling asleep. I don't can't get him on. Get him to tell me what the unit number is. Hey, dude, come here. Listen to this. Listen. Hello. I'm gonna need you to wake up, sir. Okay. Sir, could you please give me the unit? Well, I, yeah, I gotta ask you something. How come y'all uh, all y'all do is just sit on y'all and watch cars come in and out that door instead of helping people that need help? Because and need to see like you won't give us a unit number. You shut your up hollering at me. You need to do your damn job. You rent a cop. I'm a rent a cop. I'm a rent a cop. But your is a fall asleep. Would you just give me the unit number, please? I'll give you the number, the unit number. You ready for the unit number? Are you li are you listening to me? Yes. I this am is to you, sir. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just uh -oh. got pranked by your co-worker. Uh oh, <laughs> y'all crazy. Y'all crazy. Ah, uh, this is not funny, man. This is not funny no, at all. No. Y'all got me out here walking around this. Complex, looking for people hollering and screaming and, and out, and your sleeping falling asleep every 35 seconds. Man, y'all put it off. Okay. All uh, right, let me, let me ask you something, man. What is, what is the baddest radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> you can't tell me. That ain't greatness right Tommy, there. that's one of my faves you right there. Boy, I got to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't tell me that ain't greatness right there. That's one Ooh, of my faves. getting on your nerves, too, man. <laughs> what, man? What? All right, it's this time, y'all. It's the week of. I am headed to West Palm Beach, Florida. I will be in West Palm Beach, Florida at the Improv. That's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. West Palm Beach Improv. Tickets selling like hotcakes, and I'm grateful. The nephew was on the way. All right, and then laying in the cut, Arlington Improv. <laughs> we ain't even on down there, but they buying tickets. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Lord, I was getting worried about it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, and we want to say thank you to Colleen, Texas, everybody that came right. out to see the nephew twice okay. as nice comedy club. I appreciate y'all, baby. Appreciate you, appreciate you. Black-owned comedy club doing big things. Yes, sir. All right. That's good, Tommy. Were they? Thank you. All right, coming up at the top of the hour, guys, entertainment news. Travis Scott had a want to get away Southwest Airlines commercial moment. And more questions about this whole Jussie Smollett 
attack. That's coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, there are still questions and a lot of them about this whole Jussie Smollett uh, attack. According to TMZ, Jussie Smollett rehearsed the attack against him uh, days before the incident, and it was all staged for the camera. This is according to what two brothers told cops. Law enforcement sources told CBS that Abel and Ola Osandero um, told cops they were uh, that they got in a car with Jussie and scouted a location Settling on the right, on the one on the right outside of the uh, of Jussie's apartment, the brothers said Jussie chose the spot because he believed a camera would have captured the action. The brothers performed per, uh, before the rehearsal. They screamed out they recognized Jussie from Empire and then hurled a racist N-word and then the homophobic F-word at him. TMZ is reporting the brothers told police Jussie said he wanted to make it a, quote, physical thing, but not to the point he'd be seriously injured. Now, when the cops arrived, Jussie took them down to the area. He said the attack went down and pointed to the camera, saying it was... Um, it was good the incident was captured on video. What he didn't know was that the camera was pointed in the wrong direction and didn't <laughs> capture the incident. Wow. My job was to put the bleach. That was my well, job, you... to put the bleach. The bleach was really lemon water. That was my job. That is what oh. I did. <laughs> the police, I have to say you this. You are not the one who did it. We didn't do it. I, I did the lemon mm-hmm. water. What did you do? It was just juice. <laughs> Thank you. See these Just two juice. fools. See these two right here. Yes. You, are, you are the one that could not tie the noose juice. the right way. You are it's the one that not, could not. Juice. No one put the noose on you. No it one. I don't know why Justin said we did. 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 There was no noose. The police. my father. Go back over. No go over with the baby. There was no way. We never do noose. Never do we do noose. I want this to be clear that this is Tommy <laughs> and J.L. Yeah. Oh, I'm not oh we are that. clear. You know, I want so, everybody listening to Please don't tie my name to this. <laughs> I like it, though, but just don't tie yeah, my it name. Was no, juice. It was you. juice. No, keep listening. It was juice. Because we, we know we, we, did it, we, did it, we did it rehearsal on Wednesday. We were we not, my brother. the Subway sandwich, and we just saw him. And we said, okay, we'll do. No. I like him, Pat. We'll do. <laughs> Why well, I sound like y'all from India? Keep listening because you know uh, Steve is going to get stuck in. He, he uh, died like uh, hating. Look at him. Look at him. That's his way in, Jay. That's his way in. He hating Tommy. You know he's going to get caught up. You know he's yeah. dying. All right, listen. He promised us. I do have he promised us. He, we, he promised us we would do African Empire. That's what he promised us. <laughs> I do have to say this. The police in Chicago are still investigating this incident. That's why he's saying that. Yeah. Okay. So we don't know if it's a... Is that too soon a... for these jokes? <laughs> I would think so. Well, That's why we ain't saying that. Obviously, y'all ain't feel that way. So. Here we are. Yeah. If it is too soon, we won't do them. <laughs> yes. Well, can I you take, talk? I take, thanks. I take okay, back the lemon take juice. everything I said back. Take take back in your juice. own voice. <laughs> Not take the noose juice. off. Take the noose off, my brother. Take it off. <laughs> Me, I can tell you what happened. Me and my brother, right? <laughs> <laughs> we wanted the Subway sandwich. Uh, Shut up. You no. all are going to feel like complete no. idiots when this comes out to be the truth. Well, then we'll just reenact it a different way. <laughs> you know, you won't ever, ever again. You make me we'll do it differently. Man. Stupid. Get That'll your get fellow it. comedian, Steve. Uh-uh. <laughs> All right, listen. Uh, please. Uh, Take us to the next break. A- uh, go to Mr. Andrew. Ladies apologies. and gentlemen, ladies. Apologies. Ladies. Hey, uh, Yes, Steve. I will say, gentlemen, but we don't have none. <laughs> Ladies and junior. Thank you. Miss Ann Tripp. This is Andrew. Ann Tripp with the news. Good morning. Okay, a coalition of 16 states has filed a suit in federal court to block President Trump's plan to build that border wall without the okay and the allocation of funds from the Congress. 15 of the states bring in suit led by Democratic governors, the 16th Maryland led by a Republican. They're all seeking a preliminary injunction that would prevent Trump from acting on that emergency declaration while the matter plays out in the courts. Meanwhile, demonstrators rallied in cities across the country yesterday to protest that emergency declaration. One took place in the nation's capital, where several hundred protesters stood right across from the White House to demonstrate. 
A new NPR PBS NewsHour Marist poll finds that a majority of Americans, six out of ten of them, disapprove of the emergency designation, don't even think there is an emergency, and that Trump is misusing, they think, his presidential powers. However, Trump's base remains solidly behind him. Authorities say the crime is way up these days in Jacksonville, Florida, so much so that local lawmakers say they're considering calling in a National Guard after a string of shootings there left six victims dead over just the past four days. Jacksonville Democratic Senator Audrey Gibson says the bodies are piling up. I don't have a problem calling out the National Guard. I'm not interested so much in having armed guardsmen on every corner, but we need to have a bigger presence in this city. So far, 21 people have been murdered in Jacksonville since just the beginning of this year. And the senator's calling for a citywide curfew of 10 p.m. North Carolina's Board of Elections has opened hearings on an investigation into an alleged ballot fraud problem during last November's congressional race in the Tar Heel State's 9th District. After all this time, still no winner has been declared because of allegations that a Republican political operative tampered with absentee ballots. Uh, state officials are now determining whether a whole new election is going to be half to hell. According to recent polls out of Emerson College in Iowa and Monmouth University in New Jersey, folks, Senator Kamala Harris of California running near the top of the list of Democratic hopefuls running for the White House, just behind former Vice President Joe Biden and Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. That's right. And the California senator has also held a number one spot, they say, on CNN's Democratic power rankings list for months. By the way, Bernie Sanders says he's about to announce that he's going to re-enter the race and run for president again. He's making that announcement sometime today. Finally, today is Adopt a Rabbit Day. Uh, what's up, Doc? Uh, maybe not that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show, everybody. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, yesterday, guys, was President's Day. President Trump is defending his declaration of a national emergency at the U.S.-Mexican border. This was the calmest national emergency call I've ever heard. Uh, In case you missed it, Trump said the U.S. is confronting a national security crisis at the White House, even on on Friday. And uh, then he went to play golf. Okay. Okay. So national emergency. Right about to have his wall about to pop off. Get out here and get this 18 yeah. in. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> First, I'm going to say, I'm going to come Then I'm going to go play golf. Then I'm going to yeah. eat something. Then I'm going to eat again. Then right. I'm going to eat again. <laughs> Yeah, and and let me let this be known. The, the President's Day that I celebrated yesterday was the Barack side. That's oh. where I was. <laughs> yes. yes. I, okay. That's somebody somebody sent, sent something out that says, I'll celebrate President's Day when we get when one. When we get one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right now, we yeah. don't have one. Yeah. yeah. Now, Anyway, Mr. Trump cited an invasion of U.S. by illegal immigrants and warned about the flow of illicit drugs along the southern border. Under the emergency declaration, Trump plans to divert Defense Department funds to build the wall. A number of Democrats calling are, are calling his declaration an illegal uh, thing, and he is trying to uh, go around Congress. Also, in other related news, President Trump is not giving up on the Nobel Peace Prize. He thinks he should win. For- <laughs> He he got where's the peace? Man, ain't what nobody. peace we talking about? He <laughs> does, but he thinks he should win. You know, and he's, peace yeah, and he's getting ready to set up First another all, meeting with Tim Jong like Un. You get a piece of pie. Piece of pie. <laughs> why would why would he get that? Well, he thinks he should win it, Steve, for at least trying to denuclearize North Korea. Well, yeah. what about well, you, know, banning, the you don't you just ban seven Muslim countries from traveling here? You want a wall? The right. thing, Nobel Peace Prize. Keyword, Keyword peace. being peace. peace, yeah. <laughs> Man, dude. Well, you know, the Japanese prime minister wrote this five-page letter, but what he's not saying is that they're saying that the White House requested the letter. So he the Japanese letter, prime okay. minister wrote this letter, letter as part today. of, like, this <laughs> no nomination <laughs> process. Jay, we've I had see. enough of I hear you, Jay. This morning. <laughs> we have. Come on, man. <laughs> Mm. I say it's a no, no problem. She let him out, okay? <laughs> Pun- punish press. Punish press. Still use punish press. <laughs> no. It's called U.S. Mail, the post office. Oh, I don't know about the daddy one. Mm, mm. All right, well, coming up at 34 after the hour, we're going to have more on this whole Jussie Smollett story. It keeps... Uh, we're so confused with this oh, story. Oh, you want some more, huh? Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> 
I didn't know you were going to ask for some more. I didn't know you were going to ask for some more. I'm just, because it's such a huge story. And people are confused. They want to know the truth. Uh, Jesse on ABC, on uh, Good Morning America with uh, Robin Roberts said, why would someone make something like this up? So anyway, yeah, it, it really is. All right, we'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Jesse Smollett is accusing, uh, he is being accused of orchestrating the attack against himself. Uh, According to uh, multiple reports, police say the two men that were arrested last week, their names are Ola and Abel Osendero. They claim that they were paid $3,500 to help Jesse Smollett stage this attack. Officials have also released the brothers without charging them. Jesse Smollett's attorneys released a statement. Uh, They're saying as a victim of a hate crime who has cooperated with the police investigation, Jesse Smollett is angered and devastated by recent reports that the perpetrators are individuals he is familiar with. He has now been further victimized by claims attributed to these alleged perpetrators that Jesse played a role in his own attack. Wow. And that is crazy. So his lawyer, that's the statement? Wow. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, so, then, I mean, you know, look, you got to wait and see. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. Jussie you is know. sticking to his story. He's sticking yes. to his story, and the police are still investigating. These are the things that are, are, are being leaked. They're, well, they're all letting... men know that, you know. You what? stick to the story. You, stick, yeah, you, you know, got to do that. all the way out, you know. Wow. Yeah. But not for 3500 But I just, remote. I don't see why. He would lie about this. Uh, yeah, I that's mean, the question. It that's the question. It, I, I don't, I don't know the purpose of that. Yeah, the right. purpose of lying about it. I don't know why, but see, the police is the forensic science today is unbelievable. Absolutely, yes, it is. Mm-hmm. And you know, they identified the two guys in the video. They went back and researched every corner that they came from. They went back that night and looked at every camera to see where these two guys showed up in the one photo that they did have. That's how they tra- this, traced it back to these two guys right here. Now, they done let these two guys go. Yeah. Based on what they've mm-hmm. said so mm-hmm. far. Yeah. yeah. Now, you know, we got a problem now. Yeah, and you know, Steve, everyone that has been on the news that uh, have said that they have a relationship with Jesse, that they know him, they just... It say this is not that this does not go with the kind of person that he is with his character. They don't believe that he would do something like this, that he would make up a story like this and stage the, this attack yes, and lie about right, it. Right, the Jesse that they know. That's what the people who know him are saying. Well, I mean, his you know, supporters. The yeah, lawyer's statement is pretty uh, solid, you know. know. Yeah, and uh, you know, Ava DuVernay, the uh, director, she directed um, uh, um, Selma and um, the other movie with Oprah. Uh, anyway, uh, she 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 took to Twitter. She said, despite the inconsistencies, I can't blindly believe Chicago PD. She says the department, uh, this is the department that covered up shooting Laquan McDonald over a dozen times. So there so you go. So she wants to wait for the investigation well, to be complete. A, that's yeah. a true yeah. statement, too. And I think yeah, everyone should. Yeah, that's everyone true. should mm-hmm. wait because it is an ongoing investigation. It just looks that's crazy. True. And everyone is confused right now, you know, about this. Do you think it could be a finale to Empire, maybe? You know? See right here. I'm sorry. This is probably the reason they don't want you leading this show. Ever. I lead pretty good. You think they could have been shooting an episode of Empire? That's all I see. That's your team. That's the two teams right there. Them two right there. That's my dude. That's team Tommy. That's team Tommy. That's my dude. When he move, I move just like that. Just like (laughs) Hey, DJ, bring that back. (laughs) The stupid leading. But but I I, I do understand. Let's wait and see what really happens. Yeah, because the investigation is ongoing. You know, it doesn't. I, I mean, honestly, it looks crazy right now. It doesn't look good. Yeah. But, um, but if he's does. lying, he has made it bad for everybody who's going to report something like that. Oh, absolutely. And they're just not going to believe him. Yeah. I mean, you know, I hope true. Now, that's true, Jack. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the same thing, the way they, and I don't, you know, I'm just saying, not, not comparing the two. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, if you're talking about a hate crime, I am comparing the two. It's just like women who've been sexually molested. Mm-hmm. And then when they come forward, Oh, it's like, well, what did, were you wearing? What did you do? You know, and then it makes it awful bad for women 
who have really been suffering from some type of, yeah. you know, sexual physical assault and blaming the victim. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's mm-hmm. like the little boy, the story we read when we were kids, the little boy who cried wolf, cried wolf, you know. Yeah. It's just, it, it's really, you know, it's awful. But we have to wait until the police investigation is over, you know. Wow. Coming up, it is a nephew with today's prank phone call. That's coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. Subject, my housewife misses the street life. Hmm. Mm. But, yeah, but right now, it is the nephew here with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Neff? A small favor. That's what I want. I, I'd like to ask for a small favor. Now, this sounds perfectly harmless. Don't it? I'm Don't proud it? of you, Neff. Just surely tell him to run it. Okay. Small favor. Run it. Run it. Run it. Hello? Oh, I'm trying to reach Vicky. This is Vicky. Hey, Vicky, how you doing? Are, are you the um? Are you the niece of, of, of uh, uh, the, I think it's ain't ain't Is, is yeah. ain't your aunt? Yes. Okay. And your, your, now, your aunt passed away. How many, how many years ago your aunt passed? It was about five years ago. Okay. Listen, we, I'm over here at the funeral home. Uh, my, my, my sister just passed away. And uh, they gave me your phone number. Did, did you guys, we're going through a little bit of a situation here. Did you guys aunt have, you know, your aunt was a heavyset woman. Is that right? Yes, she was. Okay. Now they had to. Did, did they have to put her in a in a? Did they have a bill a, a special casket for her? Uh, yeah. Okay, that's what we're kind of going through with my sister. We ordered a um, a special casket for 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 my sister, and uh, I, I'm assuming this is the same thing that you guys went through. I called several of her her children, but I wasn't able to get in touch with anybody. But the, the funeral home actually had your name on file as well. So they gave me your number where I would be able to talk to you. Is, is that is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. You can speak to me, but you know what seems to be the problem. Well, listen, uh, we we the, the 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 funeral is actually in two days. Okay. And we ordered one of those special caskets, but it doesn't look like it's going to be in for another week. So you know, it's almost like we're gonna we're gonna we're not gonna have a casket for her. Um, you know, for the funeral. And, okay. you know, the, like I said, the funeral home told us about, you know, that you guys were the last ones that ordered a, a casket of that size. And, you know, me and the, the rest of the family has been, you know, we've been trying to figure out what to do and what to do. Do you think it's any way possible we can borrow the casket that your ain't is in? And then when the casket comes in that we ordered, we can put her in that casket and put her back down to rest like she's always been. Do you think that's what? possible? Hello? Excuse me? Hello? Hello? Yeah, Excuse yeah. me, could you repeat yourself? What exactly are you asking me? Well, what I'm saying is, do you think we can borrow your ain't casket? Because, you know, the funeral is in two days, and the casket is not going to be in in order for us to be able to bury her in a in a casket for, the, you know, to accommodate her size. That's what I'm asking. What kind of shit is this you're talking about? First of all, who is this? Okay, uh, no, my name is Larry. Uh, like I say, my name is Larry. I got you. I got you guys. Like I say, I tried to call some of her kids, but nobody ever picked up when I called. Okay, well, and, but well, they said yeah, that they he, had uh, her niece's number on file too. You, you are her niece, Vicky, right? Yes, I am. Okay, well, that's what I'm saying. Do you think that maybe you can talk to the children and see if we can maybe use that particular casket? Okay, wait a minute. What the f- talking about? This some. B- First of all, who who is this? You you gotta be losing your f- mind if you think I'm gonna let you dig up my ante for just to bury your sister. No, yeah, but you know, I, that's yeah, your I understand problem. where you're coming from. But what I'm trying to say is that we don't have a casket big enough, and they was they they let us know that you guys were the last ones that had a, a casket that you know. What they gotta your, do your, with us? That's your sister. Figure it out. Have you lost your? No, no. Well, okay. First of all, what I'm trying to do is this: the family been grieving pretty hard, and I just wanted to make sure that the funeral would be right. And it ain't gonna and, be right if we don't have. That be? We, we don't, How do you we, think my family gonna feel digging my any up? You lost your. Life. Man, don't call me with this. Who is the the funeral home that gave you my number? 
to ask me to use the casket so you can bury your sister. Who is the name of that person? I can't remember, but it was, it was it was the guy, the funeral director let me know that you guys had went through a situation where you had to bury your your your, your aunt. Like I said, and I tried to call. And what's your the, name the, again? My my name is Larry. Okay, Larry, this is a, this is a, a stupid. I don't know what gave you my phone number to call me asking you this dumb. Can you believe this? And call here asking me so can they dig up a so they can bury their sister? It's not that his sister don't have a casket? Hello? No, no. What kind of saying that I understand it's not your fault. No, I understand it's not your fault. What I'm trying to say is would y'all show some sympathy and some love for what me yeah. and my family going through because we don't have a casket. Like I say, my sister my sister was a was you know, was a is a heavy was a heavy hey, set woman. That's all so fine and good. You know, my condolences go out to you and your family. You know, I'm trying to be as reserved as I can with this whole situation. But do you understand what kind of stupid <laughs> you're asking me right now to actually dig up my aunt who was already who's been in the ground for five years? Years to bury your sister? That's okay, but let me ask you this, though. Know, if, 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 like if, if, if we use it, your aunt ain't going to know. She ain't going to know we use it. What, what kind of stupid is for you to say to me? My aunt and I, we don't know. Are you stupid? What kind of are you smoking? Are you smoking crack? We don't know. She not ground no more. First of all, you know what? I, 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 first of all, I appreciate you trying to work with me, but I want to say this. You you don't even have the authority to make that decision. If you give me one of the numbers to, to one of your cousins, oh, well, then maybe I one was, of cause I was really trying to be nice and be calm, but guess what? We're not doing this stupid I'm trying to be nice to you and tell and try to help you out, but no, you want me to get ignorant and act stupid with you. I was trying to be nice and sympathetic, but we not doing it. I'm not giving you the number. I got the authority to tell you right now. No, we not digging her up so you can bury your sister. Figure it out. Okay, so 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 that's just it. I can't talk to now. Yeah, that's her, it. One no, you ain't talking to nobody. You talking to me? Okay, I got I got I got something else I need to tell you though. I need I need to tell you something else. Are you listening? What you tell me. I want to tell you this. This. Is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Vicky, your sister Sheila got me to prank phone call you. <laughs> well, hold up. Who is this again? <laughs> Vicky, Vicky, this is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your sister Sheila got me to prank phone call you. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> So well, you got me over here all worked up. I, I'm cussing. I'm a kid. She play too much. She ain't got to. Vicky, I got one more thing to ask you, baby. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show for y'all <laughs> crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. I, it's just a, it's just a small oh, face. Oh you see what I'm saying? Too much, Tommy. Huh? Oh Ain't nobody can dig that. nobody what? up for yes. you. <laughs> Thank you. Use their casket, dog. <laughs> hey, dog. The casket is perfect for 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 my sister that just passed. You know what I'm saying? Makes sense. It's to perfect. Me. Why should just use it once? Why all that money for one time? That makes no sense. There you go, he Jay. Just Team with you. He just Tommy, baby. With you. Team Tommy. You know what I'm saying? Why should a casket only be used once? Yeah. Why? <laughs> The, the person to the is body gone. That was already in the cast. What happened to the body? But they gone. That's how about we just do that for show and so then you, we sell it again. Yeah, yeah, and if you if you borrow it, are you going to give it back? You have any idea what that thing gonna smell like? <laughs> <when you're talking laughs> about? They ain't thought about it. Someone with some sense, please. I can't tell him and jump to her desk. We're gonna get them. We're gonna get them ashes out of there. <laughs> stupid keeps rolling. Stupid is rolling this weekend, and stupid is rolling right into West Palm Beach, Florida, at the Improv. That's the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. Get your tickets; they on sale right now and laying in the cut. Arlington Improv, February 28th. That is Thursday night, and then February, and then March 1st and 2nd. The nephew will be in Arlington Improv, Dallas, Texas. Get your tickets; they on sale right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, thank you, nephew. <laughs> Jesus. All right, uh, coming up next, Strawberry Letter. My housewife misses the street life. That is the subject. We'll get into it right after this. Uh-huh. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
All right, it is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you, you, you need advice on relationships, dating, work, parenting, sex, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to Steve Harvey FM and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now, today. Uh Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry Letter. Subject, my housewife misses the street life. Wow. All right, dear Stephen Shirley, I am married, and I have been with my wife for many years. We were good friends before we became lovers, and I helped her work through a lot of bad relationships before we started dating. I've never held her past against her, and I never throw it up in her face. But whenever we are out with our married friends, my wife likes to point out how she used to kick it back in the day and brag about all of the lavish gifts she got from her past lovers. It's embarrassing to me, and it makes her look bad. I told her that she sounds like a loose woman, but she said her past is in the past, and it means nothing to her now. But I don't think her past is completely out of her system. She craves attention and loves going out with the girls so she can come home and tell me that she still got it. I'm so different. I like going out, but not weekly. I don't care if she goes out with her friends, and I never respond when she tells me about the attention she got while she was out. I'm not a stalker, nor do I check her phone or question her about anything. This makes her very upset, and she thinks that I should be more concerned about what she's doing. I trust her for now because I don't want to think that my wife will revert back to how wild and free she used to be. I hope she doesn't think that because I trust her, I'm stupid enough to sit back and let her cheat on me. Steve and Shirley, you know the saying, you can't turn a Mm. substitute the word for garden tool in here. You can't turn a hoe into a housewife. housewife. Okay. (laughs) paper, Shirley. H-O-E, hoe, just a garden tool, Shirley. You can't turn a garden garden tool. tool. Into uh, a housewife, but the words on here, the paper is hope. H O E. Yeah. All right, well. Yeah, you uh, don't want to say garden to people mistake like for a rake or shovel and nothing like that. <laughs> well, uh, I'm starting to think this applies to my marriage. I'm tired of being embarrassed. Should I give her some space so she can decide if marriage is right for her? Please help. Well, I got to give you some credit. Uh, I think for for being a pretty cool sounding husband here, you sound pretty mature. Uh, You were a good friend to her, you said. You helped her work through some past bad relationships. You never uh, held that against her. You took it when you guys were out in public and she embarrassed you in front of your your friends. You don't mind when she goes out with her girlfriends for girls' night out. You're not sweating her. You're not nagging her. You're not going through her phone because you say you trust her. And that's what a marriage and a true relationship is all about. Uh, I, I don't know what more she could want in a in a good man. Uh, it, it seems like your wife is taking you and your marriage for granted. But the crazy part is, is that she says that her past is the past and it means nothing to her now. But how can that be the case? How can that be when she's out telling everybody about all the lavish gifts she used to get and, and all of that? That was in the past, but she continues to bring it up. You've told her that you're embarrassed and that it makes her look bad, but she's not listening. Uh, it sounds like uh, you, you say she craves your attention. So are you giving her enough attention? Does she need more attention? Maybe she'll stop if you pay a little more attention to her, things like that. I don't know. You seem to maybe too free free with her and she's so used to these bad relationships so maybe she thinks you don't care about her maybe you need to switch things up a little bit uh you know and uh act a little jealous sometimes see how she responds to that steve man we play this game with you (laughs) this woman right here my housewife misses the street life okay cool you've been married to your girl for a while uh you know she had to work through a lot of bad relationships but then when y'all go out with y'all married friends, your wife like to point out how she used to kick it back in the day and brag about all the lavish gifts she got from her past lovers. Mm-hmm. It's embarrassing to me. Right there. Let's stop the letter. Why you let her do it, dog? And this don't happen one time. It happens all the time. That's why you write. Why do you allow her to bring up all these past lovers and these lavish gifts? Now, you've told her that it bothers you, and she keep doing it? 
All right, I got a suggestion for you in a minute. It makes her look like a loose woman. Didn't you say how she craves attention? She go out with her girls and she come home brag and she still got it. Well, you know what? You keep on with this here. Why don't you let her have it? Mm. See, all them bad relationships that you helped her get past, she obviously, you know, is not appreciative of the fact that you have taken her in spite of all she did, nurtured her and tried to show her some semblance of how she should be treated. This is just a person that just don't appreciate how it feels to be treated right. There are some people in this world, men and women, that think that staying in a messy, dysfunctional relationship is okay. And it's not. But it's really not for you, though, dog. It really ain't, man. She craves attention. You know, y'all so different. I like going out, but not weekly. Well, see, so I'm assuming y'all probably in your 30s. I'm assuming. Because she going out weekly. So she got to be early 30s or something. That's what I'm... Huh? And he might be a little older, you're saying? No, I think I think he just don't want to. Oh, okay. She could. He could be just a couple of years older, but not much. You know, she don't, he don't care if she go out with her friends. And then she never, he never responds when you tell her about the tension. And, and, and uh, that she gets, that she comes back bragging she still got it. He don't check her phone or question her about anything. Then that makes her upset, and she thinks that I should be more concerned about what she's doing. I don't understand this woman, dog. I don't, I'm not finna flip my script and start checking on you and all this here because I don't want to live my life like that. I, I'm assuming he wants to be in a relationship where he trusts a woman because he said, I trust her for now because I don't want to think my wife will revert back to how wild and free she used to be. What's she talking about? If it's on her mind, hello. Like my mama always say, if it's on your mind, it's just a matter of time. Woo, that rhymes. You better yeah. say that. If it's on your mind, it's just a matter of time. Matter of time. And that's usually the case. That's so true, Steve. It is, man. Mm-hmm. And so I would be very concerned at this point. Now, when we come back, I have a suggestion. All right. Well, look, we'll have part two of Steve's response coming up uh, at 23 after the hour. Subject, my housewife misses the street life right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, let's recap today's Strawberry Letters subject. My housewife misses the street life. Woo. It's ignorant. Yeah. Helped your wife get through all these bad relationships she had. Married her. Every time y'all go out, which you don't want to go out all the time, she want to go out weekly. But when you go out with your married married friends, she always talk about how she kicked it back in the day, brag about all the gifts she got, makes you embarrassed. She seems like a loose woman. She like to go out with her girls, come by bragging about how she still got it, you know, uh, and and so and a whole lot of other mess. But now, bro, <laughs> if this woman is making you feel this way when y'all got, and she does it repeatedly, and he's not writing this letter because it happened one time. He said, whenever we go out with our married friends, my wife likes to point out how she used to kick it. Here's what you got to do. You got to put a stop to this. Now, since I'm not telling you to divorce your wife over this, I'm, t- I'm my suggestion is how to stop it. First of all, sit her down the next time, right before y'all go out to do with the married couple. Mm. Don't do it no like days before, because you don't want her to say, well, I forgot. Right before y'all going out to do, say, baby, now listen. Let's go out and have a good time. I'm asking you not to bring up your past in front of nobody. It's embarrassing to me, and it it makes you come across as a loose woman. So I'm asking you, don't do this at table because it's embarrassing. When you get at the table, if she do it, get up and go home. And leave her there. Soon as she get up, get up and go. You can leave her with the car however you want to do it. I ain't saying leaving a woman without no car. But get up and leave. Walk out. Mm. Mm. See her at home. Woman, dog, walk Now, when you get to the house, 
Why did you leave? I asked you nicely before not to do this. I, but I've asked you this several times before. So if you do it, I'm going to let you, because I'm, what I'm not going to do is sit up here and be embarrassed. Now, bro, it might look embarrassing when you do that, but don't it feel embarrassing if you stay there? Yeah. I know I would be tripped out at my, my, my girl sitting up here talking about all the gifts she used to get from her dudes and all this. Here, whoa, whoa, what the, how that sound? But then she says, leave my past, and my past is the past. Right. But you but bring then, it up at yeah, every chance you, you get. You bring it up every damn week. <laughs> right. <laughs> More like the prince. Now, Steve and Shirley, you know the saying, you can't turn a hoe into a housewife. Mm. Well, I'm starting to think this applies to my marriage. Well, I think it do, though. Mm. 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 Now, I ain't saying that about your wife. I'm just reading what you wrote. He, said, he wrote it. I'm tired of being embarrassed. Should I give her some space so she can decide if marriage is right for her? Please help. Yeah, but tell her if she do it again, walk off. Because, bro, you don't need this. I don't really know no man that can take this. I don't know no woman that's going to take this. You go out on a date with a woman, married, and then be talking about all the women you had while y'all out with her and her friends. She's insecure and immature. She's very, mm-hmm. she's very, because she needs reassurance. I don't think you need to pay her any more attention. I think, I, I think she's a monger for that. There are some people who just crave it. I don't care if you give her some more, she's still going to want it from anybody. So I'm done. And then these bad relationships, Steve, that she, were, she was in, then she's bragging about they gave her lavish gifts. So what? I know. Somebody I... bought you a, a bracelet. <laughs> but had another woman a on the bag. side. Yeah. It really means a bag. Yeah. You got a damn coach bag. Now you just up in here just, ooh, <laughs> girl. <laughs> yeah. Uh-uh. Yes. Jay. Oh, come on. You just don't want nobody have no fun. That's all it is. <laughs> no, baby, baby. You don't want to have fun. No, but baby, but listen, no. fun. I like to go out. I like to have fun. Okay, but baby, but listen, you can go out and have fun. Just when we out with the married people, just check yourself a little bit, all right? Well, it's all about having fun and letting people know what I had got from other people. Now, it ain't had nothing to do with you. It ain't had well, nothing to do with hold you. Hold up, but, but baby, that's what I'm saying. See, we married now. That's why I don't want you talking about what some other, some, somebody other other you man a, gave you. You're a killjoy. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. He's kill <laughs> I'm a killjoy. Yeah, the joy, you kill the joy I have. You're killing it. Baby, you a married woman now. I ain't going nowhere. I'm just having fun. Just fun. <laughs> F-U-N-N-N. Fun. Yeah, you can <laughs> <you> get that. <laughs> can I just have fun? You're having too much damn fun. <laughs> Is he now you going to find your way right on out this damn marriage. Woo-hoo. What you going to do? I'm just trying to have a good time. Okay, we're going to keep it. having a good time. You're going to have it where you're going to have it. You, you, you're you going to be back out there where you was. Ugh. My mama told me. <laughs> Not the ugh. <laughs> wait, 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 what? <laughs> she can't stand her husband. <laughs> she said, yeah. Ugh. Trifling. <laughs> what was that you call me? Uh, you know, you know, you know what, you, you know, I'm, I... Uh, look, can I just ask a question then? Let me what, ask what, one question. What? Is we together or not? Well, it don't seem like we what? are. Because you always talking about your past, what yeah. everybody done bought you. Fun. Girls just want to have fun. That's what they want to do. Have fun. All right, we're going to have you fun. Ugh. I don't give a damn <laughs> what you do. <laughs> But you still got it, though, right? Ugh, me one more time, helpful. <laughs> uh, one more ugh. She make me laugh. Uh, I can't stand it. Ugh, your damn stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it just got, got real. It just got real. Yeah, he out some stuff he really think with your ugly ass. <laughs> 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 She that still was, got it. Uh, all right, well, listen, guys. Uh, you can email us or Instagram us your thoughts on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM. Coming up in about 10 minutes, is Anthony Hamilton's version of the Star Spangled Banner, uh, Banner our new favorite? Yep. That's the yes. question. Yep. 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 Yes, up there. Yes, Woo! Up there. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
All right, guys, so this past weekend, the NBA All-Star Weekend was in Charlotte, North Carolina. Team LeBron versus Team Giannis. Uh, we know that Team LeBron won the game. Yes, we do. So, so what did you guys think about the game? We talked about it earlier, but what did you guys think great. about the game? The three-point contest, uh, Junior. The slam dunk. We know you didn't like the slam dunk contest. So what didn't you like about it? What was wrong? There was no dunk. <laughs> 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 you going to have a slam dunk. Somebody got to put this ball right. in this go. <laughs> right. Man, it was just no dunk. Mm -hmm. And you said, why don't they move the three-point game to the, to the closer? Yeah, and Steve and then, said no. Well, because you, you, the dunk is more exciting. But the three-point is good. You it know, good. it's mm -hmm. fair. It you good. ain't got to grade it. It's how many we make. Yeah. That's uh -huh. it. Mm -hmm. And But, you know, the slam dunk, it's too many attempts. Oh, you know, if you make is. it on the fourth one, hey, even the crowd stopped clapping. <laughs> and then they was mad at the scores they was getting. Mm -hmm. you, you Four times you tried the same duck. We know it's coming. <laughs> oh, we ain't okay. even surprised. We really, yeah. okay. we really could have let the, Anthony sing another 30 minutes. We really could have done that, honestly. All right, speaking of Anthony Hamilton, You know the dude, up. hold on one second. Okay. You know the dude that had the outfit on that jumped over the airplane? But knock but, the airplane but, but over. But knock the tail off, the, oh, the yeah, propeller. Yeah, yeah. He made the dunk, but after he towed a prop up. <laughs> he towed a plane. I man, y'all young dudes, man. <laughs> but then he over there flexing like you don't see this wheel right by your foot. Yeah. <laughs> you done knocked the wheels off. <laughs> you done towed Wang off the plane. Boy, boy, you didn't make You didn't clear the plane. <laughs> You oh, can, we, can we give a shout out though to J. Cole? Was, yeah, His halftime half performance it was. was fire. I yeah, didn't see he that. represented North I, Carolina. I like him uh, J. Cole. Yeah. Ooh, I love mm -hmm. me some J. Cole. He's he good. Did. I didn't yeah. see that at all. Okay, oh, but what? Steve, it was so good. No, I didn't so, see that. So, Carl, it was well, better we... than the Super Bowl half. Uh, yeah, oh, way better. <laughs> so, and it was just that would him. Be a yes. <laughs> But Way what we better. did here and what we do love is Anthony Hamilton's version yes. of the Star Spangled Banner. Let's hear a little bit of that. Oh. So proudly we hear at the twilight last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight and the ramparts we watch was so gallant. The bomb bursting in the air came through through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner, banner yet where? That was good. Man. That's cold. I'm tell you right now, man. That's 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 up there. Mm -hmm. That's that's that's, <laughs> that's a tie. You know? I really think it's a tie. No, for Between real, man. Between him and Marvin Gaye. <laughs> I, I think, think it's with a Marvin tie. Gaye. Yeah. Uh, he said he was know, man, honored to just be mentioned in the same breath as the great Marvin Gaye. I'm gonna tell you that. something, man. That's that's as good as Marvin's, man. That's yes, it is. Marvin's <laughs> was <laughs> now Marvin's was. Until I had heard that, you couldn't talk to me about Marvin's. 
Marvin's was the greatest oh. rendition of so the Star Spangled Banner. So him and mm. him and Anthony's tied for the two greatest suits. Thank you, sir. The, the greatest sang, singing of that anthem is Whitney. Whitney. Oh, Whitney. Yeah. Hands yeah. down. Yeah. Hands but down. But rendition, yeah. though, I'm talking about, hey, can you see? Oh, Marvin, Marvin, oh, yeah. Marvin. Yeah, he was cold. Oh. By the door. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. Lee-Eli. Boy, Magic them was going crazy. <laughs> Boy, let me tell you something. But, yeah. I was sitting there, man, and then they got to put, clap into it. And he looked yeah. good. He, he, it, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful oh, and then, oh, oh, and right after that, mm-hmm. they said, uh-uh. You cannot do that to the national anthem no more. What? Oh, they came out, man. Oh, they, they came. They banned. Oh, oh, when Marvin did it. Oh, back oh, in the day. Oh, they mm-hmm. came out and banned that man. They said you could never do a, a a rendition of the song again like that. They put no soul on it. Basically, no, what you said. It, it was too much for him. Well, you know, Anthony said that they did ask him uh, in advance how was he going to do it, and they needed to hear it. Yeah, after and, last year. and well, all of that. And, yeah, <laughs> and after Fergie did it last year, and then he said that Fergie tweeted him and said he did a great job. I bet she did. Yeah. I yeah. bet she did. I thought that was, what I thought that was nice, say? though. I thought that was nice of her. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's cool. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. You know, but that's just artists supporting each other. It's right. like, man, you know, man, you know who really gives it up to each other in an only award show I see them doing that is the Grammys. Oh. Because they recognize mm-hmm. art in each other. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. They appreciate it. Uh-huh. Yeah, yep. All right. Western stars, too. They really, yeah. They yeah, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, coming up at the top of the hour, we're going to talk about Roger Stone. He's apologizing now to the judge for his controversial Instagram post. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Steve, Roger Stone, who you know has been so close to uh, President Bush, um, he was arrested and uh, everything recently, and now... He has uh, apologized formally for his controversial Instagram posts about a federal district judge. Her name is Amy Berman Jackson. Uh, He apologized to her in a letter filed with the court. Jackson, of course, is overseeing Stone's criminal case in D.C.'s district court. The uh, picture was posted and then deleted from Stone's Instagram account. It shows that Jackson, Judge Jackson, uh, uh, showing her next to cross hairs, mimicking the scope of a rifle. Yeah, who, uh, and, and, and the judge is a woman. Yes, she's a woman, Judge Amy I mean, Berman how, how Jackson. stupid is yeah, this, though? I know. This is the judge in your case, and you're going to post a picture of her on your Instagram? Mm-hmm. Dog, are you, what? In the post, he said, Stone said that the judge would be presiding over a quote-unquote show trial. Uh, Please inform the court that the photograph and comment today, this is his apology, were uh, improper and should not have been posted. I had no intention of disrespecting the court and humbly apologized to the court for the transgression. You stupid. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. And he's too old for that. Yeah, he's a longtime associate of of President Donald Trump. He wrote the letter. Yeah, you got to stop No respect for the law. And you posted it. So the you're damage stupid. is done. Yeah. Dog, you're stupid to be that old on trial. But this the judge in your case. Why are you posting the picture yeah. of your judge? Uh, Stone told a CNN uh, volunteer who works on his social media. Uh, he said that uh, he posted the initial Instagram uh, post and that the picture was random and not meant in any way to threaten the judge. Stone says he ordered it taken down because it was open to misinterpretation. No way. Really? Really? No way. Oh, yeah. He told a CNN uh, that a volunteer who works on his sodium so- social media, media page that. <laughs> no, no. They posted it. <laughs> a volunteer. Uh, got st- volunteers got access so to everybody it. got yeah. your password. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Stone wrote in the caption of the second post that his upcoming trial before the judge is a show trial and accused special counsel Robert Mueller of using legal trickery to ensure Jackson, the judge, who he notes was appointed by former President Barack Obama, pre- presides over the case. 
the post was then deleted. Like I Didn't said, they the damage is done. On him? They yeah, did they did. They him. did. Uh-huh. Yeah, they did, Jay. Yeah, that's what they're saying. The posts are. That's the story continues to say the posts are not likely to sit well with Judge Jackson, who last week imposed a gag order on attorneys and parties to the case. She so did not... his stupid behind figure, since I can't talk, I'll yeah, post. That's right. Okay. She's, yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. <laughs> yeah. The last thing you want to do is antagonize the judge. Mm-hmm. about to judge your case. Yeah. That makes no right. sense. <laughs> See, you know yeah. the problem Roger that's Stone why he got right now? President Obama, what? He's never been black. Yeah. So yeah. now he he acting he just he just going on living living his privileged life. Yeah, because black people would know not to do that. What? Boy, your saying. judge? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, call I don't say people. nothing over a speeding ticket. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I'm yeah. in there hush. Yeah. So the crosshairs <laughs> sign that means you're you're in my line of fire. Yeah. Yes. Exactly but but is who he That's doing it to? Definitely what that means. Well, I know, but I'm just saying, yeah. That's, so That's crazy. You're an idiot. Yeah. It is the world we live in. Yeah. Well, in, in case you don't remember, Roger Stone was uh, indicted on uh, back in January by all a I can jury. say is, at least it ain't me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? 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 Yeah, How'd he go just, I know. Listen, y'all. Listen, y'all. He just so glad not to be in some. You Somebody. understand? Somebody. Y'all don't understand. Just talk about <laughs> something. Yeah, he I just do. so glad not to be in some. <laughs> we are not. I repeat, <laughs> not. Going to let anything happen to you. We got you. Not you. Any, anything. We got yeah. you. Safe zone. We got this you. Is a safe zone. <laughs> and you know that mm-hmm. about us. <laughs> now, me and Tommy. You don't know how many arguments <laughs> we have about you when you ain't that. Oh my hey, God! Man. Even weekend, hey, man. All you have weekend, no idea. Yeah. I had to shut a lady up in the club, Steve. Oh, she yelled out some ignorant stuff, and I lit her up. I'm like, you first. It was a lot of cussing. There was a lot of cussing. Yeah, but, you know, that's where my check come from, and then it was more cussing. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we squashed all. Yeah, we Show don't allow that, that Steve. No, no. but no. the fact you got the head, they and they know it. Mm-hmm. They call yeah. you with the, hey, what's up with your boss? I see. What's he up over with here. your boy? Yeah, yeah. Hey. but yeah, I don't like the that fact that you feel like just because you know me, you can call me and ask me about my job and my boss. Yeah, I don't call but you I, and I, ask I you about your though. job and your I, boss. I did. I don't. I did. I told him, I said, well, how different. Harry on them fries? How he doing? <laughs> Happening over there. What What's up you with your this? uncle? What's up with your ragged ass uncle? Your uncle ain't never done a damn thing in his life. He ain't never done nothing. Ever. And I know him. <laughs> what have you what has your ragged ass uncle done? Nothing, dog. <laughs> And in most cases, Ever. we already heard about it. Like, oh, yeah, so we you already heard about your yeah. boy, huh? Right, we already yeah, know. Yeah, we know. We already we know. We read the news, too. It's rehashing <laughs> as far as we're concerned. We've been <laughs> over it. We've discussed it. We're done. Yeah. <laughs> I see I they got your, you the your boy out there. Well, where your boy at, man? <laughs> yeah, where your boy at? Man? And it, yeah, he got your like boy they out there, huh? Celebrating it, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's oh, a they little, oh, they there. Oh, there's one time. It's a little hate. Ooh, they got your boy jammed up, huh? Yeah, it's a smirk on their face. It's a smirk on their face. And I always say, well, he's still winning, though. He's still winning. This is the 20th time. Yes. He ain't lost so yet. Steve, Thank you need to get somewhere and sit winning. down because we, we exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we get it now. Too. But we got know you, that we, though, Know Steve. that we get it. We And we got yeah, you. we got it, man. Yeah. And, I, and I appreciate it, too. You know, uh, here's, here's, here's the thing that always keeps me in peace. First of all, I always know my heart. That's first and foremost. Secondly, I'm Isaiah 54, 17 all day. No weapon no formed weapon. against me. I don't care who plots a wicked scheme. I don't care how they 30-second sound bite me. I don't care how they do it. it it's not going to work. Now, it's going to be uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. It's going to get a little hot. But I'm I'm but I'm but going to come through just fine, as, as, as he's always done. And he always, this always happens when God is finna do something. That's right. Because the devil get mad, man. The devil can't stay. He see what God finna do for you. And here he comes. Trying to shut you down. And it it, it never works. 
never works. Thank you guys for your love and supporting me. So <laughs> Praise so the Lord, baby. We are here fighting for you. That's right. right. You. Welcome, to, wait, to, welcome to our struggle, Steve. Oh, okay. yeah. so good. I got, uh, I got, I got them. I got them. All right, listen, we'll be back with you more. You my good ass job. I know. I'm the Steve Harvey <laughs> Morning Show you. right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, this story is great. I love this story. I love stories like this. A couple who bought tickets to uh, see Dave Chappelle on Valentine's Day were very disappointed to find out that the tickets they bought were fakes. But Dave Chappelle made it up to them and then some. Check this out. Their names are Deidre and uh, Eddie Dickens. They're from uh, North Carolina, from Charlotte, North Carolina. They're huge fans of Dave Chappelle's. They bought the tickets on Craigslist, even paying more to get a wheelchair-accessible seat for Eddie. But the seller scammed them out of $500, then cut off communication with them. And uh, so the couple just said, forget it. We're just going to make the best of Valentine's Day. And they just went on out to dinner with their friends. And that's when Dave Chappelle came to dinner. He made a surprise appearance at dinner. He hand-delivered the real tickets to them. He joked and said, always get your tickets from reliable sources. And then, <laughs> and then he sat down. He chatted with them before the show. Uh, he posed for pictures with them. He said that, uh, I mean, he just couldn't have been nicer. This is great. And he said it felt good. Uh, Chappelle says, you know, it's just good to be kind. It felt like uh, I I just got to make something that was wrong right. And he says, take any opportunity that's presented to you to be kind, especially if it's something easy to do. I love that. I I really love that. Yeah. He's a good brother, though. Yeah. He really is. Chappelle, good people. Down to earth. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. You got, you got something going on like similar to that, huh, Junior? Well, yeah, I do. I didn't want to say that because you know me and Chappelle <laughs> thought about this at the same time. I said, "Well, really? I was doing the same thing." I mean, me and Walmart Family Mobile, we are bringing some guests to Uncle Steve's show tomorrow. Oh, for the, I mean, oh, excuse me, today for the uh-huh. taping. Okay, well, you know, oh, I'm nice. doing that, and I'm taking them to lunch. You know, so it's kind of oh. like right Chappelle. After, uh-huh. Right after the first show. Yes, sir. Okay, we're gonna go right to lunch, but. You know, uh, cool. you know, I'm doing that. Yeah, you know, that's I mean, nice. That's just I mean, it ain't, ain't like Chappelle's show. It's Uncle Steve's show. But, yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That's really quite different. Yeah. So, so you 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 think they're going to want to take a picture with you, or would you have them take a picture with Steve? Well, they're probably going to want to take the picture with Uncle Steve. Yeah. But the point is, they need me to get to them. <laughs> yes. Nice. But there's a big picture in the lobby. They yeah. can use They that. can use the one by the back door. <laughs> hey, yeah, man. You ain't going to take him backstage, though? I'm going to take him up there and knock on his door. Mm -hmm. But is he going to answer? That's a different story. (laughs) Okay. You did your part. I'm going to take him up there, huh? Hey, man, don't mess your little reputation up there. (laughs) Up there knocking on doors. (laughs) He's messing that up. Well, I'm just going to not open doors. Because my dressing room got... got one time a day. That's it. Now, no business up there. Junior, how many doors my dressing room got in it? But he could be in any one of them. Exactly. Locked too, yeah. He can't just walk <laughs> in. So. I could take them and up. And why there. don't Cheryl and them know that? Because they don't ever come see me. That's why. Hello. <laughs> you ain't really invited nobody, though, dog. And I don't defense. ever invite you nowhere, Tommy, because I know you're not coming. I'm talking about the girl. <sighs> now, Monica will bring herself up there, but she stay down there by the craft table. <laughs> The what? food is good on your show. Always <laughs> down there. Oh, these nice. I like these crumpets. Oh, yeah. Well, we won't talk about the time we came up there and, and we couldn't tape and stuff. We won't talk about that time. Uh-uh. Came up and couldn't tape. Remember that? We had to wait because you had a court date. You you had a court date? Oh, he did. Oh, no. okay. I know she's gonna bring that up. I don't do that. Now. Well, you, you, I don't bring up court. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, oh but you, you clown this with for... <laughs> Were you Roger Stone now, I didn't say <laughs> But he ain't even offended though. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not. I've been to court. <laughs> I didn't oh, say what yeah, it was I'm for. I'm so sick of court. <laughs> Yeah, okay, we're coming. We don't mention I got on that. show. I got that. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, yesterday, guys, was President's Day. President Trump is defending his declaration of a national emergency at the U.S.-Mexican border. This was the calmest 
national emergency call I've ever heard. Uh, in case you missed it, Trump said the U.S. is confronting a national security crisis at the White House, even on uh, even on Friday. And uh, then he went to play golf. Okay. okay. So, yep. so emergency. right about to have his wall about to pop off. Get out here and get this 18 yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. First, I'm going to play a conference. Then I'm going to go play golf. Then I'm going to yeah. eat something. Then I'm going to eat again. Then right. I'm going to eat again. <laughs> yeah. And and let me let this be known. The, the President's Day that I celebrated yesterday was the Barack side. That's oh. where I was. Yes. yes. That's, okay. That's somebody somebody sent, sent something out that says, I celebrate President's Day when we get when one. When we get one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right now, we yeah. don't have one. Yeah. Nah. Anyway, Mr. Trump cited an invasion of the U.S. by illegal immigrants and warned about the flow of illicit drugs along the southern border. Under the emergency declaration, Trump plans to divert Defense Department funds to build the wall. A number of Democrats calling are, are calling his declaration an illegal uh, thing, and he is trying to uh, go around Congress. Also, in other related news, President Trump is not giving up on the Nobel Peace Prize. He thinks he should win. For- <laughs> He he got Where's the peace? Man, ain't what nobody. peace we talking about? He <laughs> does, but he thinks he should win. You know, and he, yeah, and he's getting ready to set up another all, meeting with Tim Jong Un. Like he get a piece of pie. Piece <laughs> why would Why would he get that? Well, he thinks he should win it, Steve, for at least trying to denuclearize North Korea. Well, yeah. what about well, you, know, banned, the you don't you don't ban seven Muslim countries from traveling here? You want a wall? The right. thing, Nobel Peace Prize. Keyword, Keyword peace. being peace. peace. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Well, you know, the Japanese prime minister wrote this five-page letter, but what he's not saying is that they're saying that the White House requested the letter. So he the Japanese letter, prime okay. minister wrote this I letter as part today. of, like, this no no nomination <laughs> process. Jay, we've had enough of I your hear you, Jay. this morning. <laughs> we have. Come on, man. <laughs> Mm. I say it's a no problem. She let him out, okay? Pun- punish press. Punish press. Still use punish press? <laughs> no. It's called U.S. Mail, the post office. Oh, I don't know about the daddy one. Mm, sorry. Mm. We're so confused with this Oh, story. you want some more, huh? Okay, come on. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to ask for some more. I didn't know you were going to ask for some more. I'm just, because it's such a huge story. And people are confused. They want to know the truth. Uh, Jesse on ABC on uh, Good Morning America with uh, Robin Roberts said, why would someone make something like this up? So anyway, yeah. All right, thank you. We will be back with closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we are, last break of the day. (laughs) It was a good day. We had fun today, Steve. Um, And, of course, as always. What is so funny, you guys? We just have me on the floor. That's all. We just talked. We're right. back on the air. Yes, we're. Come I on. know. I'm sorry. Jay, just say, okay, go He's ahead. He's so go stupid. Ahead. You're not going to. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, yeah. If we're not going to tell the whole <laughs> class, right, <laughs> then we're not going to talk about it. All right. Come on up. Let the teacher come up and uh, leave us with some closing well, remarks. You know what? Um, as I as I deal with uh, life's challenges. I try to always learn from them. And so I want to talk about situations that beset you. You know, sometimes you get blindsided by it. Sometimes you just don't see it coming. You know, just stuff just comes up. It just crops up in the middle of your day. And all of a sudden, you know, thunderstorm on the horizon. Earthquakes come without warning, you know. A, a, a lot of stuff, you know, you just deal with it. It's just life, right? And sometimes, man, I get down. Because sometimes the stuff that's happening in your life, it just, I mean, it gets you down. We're all human. Everybody has down days. Every has, everybody has things that's troubling to them. And uh, what I've learned is this. On particularly rough days, when I'm sure that I can't possibly endure it, 
I like to remind myself that my track record for getting through bad days so far is 100%. Did you hear me? On particularly rough days when I'm sure, when I'm absolutely positive that I'm not going to get through this one, that I won't endure this one, I just like to stop and remind myself that my track record for getting through bad days so far is 100%, and that's pretty good. Because you know what? If you look back on it, all them bad days you've ever had, the ones where it seemed unbearable, your track record for getting through them bad days so far is 100%. <laughs> Ain't never one of them stopped you yet. And then it reminds me of how life works because I often know that whenever the devil attacks me, whenever I come under attack from Satan, because I don't really worry about people because, you know, if you really understand it, if you really have faith, you understand that the struggle that most of us are in is not against flesh and blood because, you know, but, but, but it's against rulers, it's against authorities, the powers of the dark world. If you look at the Internet, man, it's nobody that you, you're attacking. You're just dealing with a system that's set up for the devil's imps to come and do work. So you don't worry about the flesh and blood part of it. You may be in a battle that's something even bigger than that. But I'm going to tell you what I, what I know, though. If you saw the size of the blessing coming your way, then you'd understand the magnitude of the battle that you got to fight. I keep remembering that because every time God is about to do something great for me, the devil is aware of it. And the devil's job is to throw you off course. The devil's job is to discourage you. It's to cause you not to be able to see the blessings. The devil's one job is to, is to defeat you, is to make you think that you ain't gonna make it. The devil's one job is to bring about negativity. He never brings you good news. The devil's job is to wreak havoc in your life. That's his only mission. He only has one. And when you see him at work on you like that, know God got something for you. God always has something for you. Now, I'm going to read something to you that somebody sent to me this weekend. And it says, anything that annoys you is teaching you patience. Anyone who abandons you is teaching you how to stand up on your own two feet. Anything that angers you is teaching you forgiveness and compassion. Anything that has power over you is teaching you how to take your power back. Anything you hate is teaching you unconditional love. Anything you fear is teaching you courage to overcome your fear. And anything you can't control is teaching you how to let go. Somebody sent that to me this weekend. I like that last one. Anything you can't control is teaching you how to let go. When something has happened to you out there and you have no control over it, let it go. It's hard to fight an enemy and you don't know where it's coming from. You don't know the source of it. It's hard to fight something that you don't know even why it's happening. You know, don't be so tripped out with responding to what somebody's saying about you out here, especially on these social media sites and stuff. If you look these people up, they got six followers. Most of them private page. I have a new name for them. They call Thumb Gangsters. I call them Thumb Gangsters. Y'all, hold on to your God. If you saw the size of the blessings coming your way, you'd understand the magnitude of the battle you fight. And on, like I said in the beginning, on those particular rough days when I just know I can't possibly endure, I remind myself that my track record for getting through bad days so far is 100%. And that's pretty good. And guess what? You got the same track record that I got for getting through bad days. All of y'all made 100% of getting through bad days. So what you tripping because you having another? That's it for me today. Drop it, baby. Yeah, drop, drop. Could I be like Y'all have a great weekend. Like- oh,
For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 